Hey guys, uh, Nathaniel here again. Let me just get this started. Um, okay, so we're doing something a little bit different now. We're going to be doing called the uh, the joint plot. This is sort of our first complicated um, multi-figure plot that we're going to be doing with Seaborn. It's pretty good. Uh, documentation is okay. Uh, I'm going to show you just a little bit of extra stuff, a little bit of spice on top. Um, so let's get started. Uh, so here's what the joint plot looks like. Uh, so Ooh, ooh, okay. So the joint plot looks like this. Um, we've got two distributions on top. Uh, these are going to be like histograms or KDEs. Uh, these are called the marginals, is, is what these are called. Uh, so one distribution here, one distribution on the side. Uh, and then right inside here, you've got the joint uh, plot. So in this case, I'm plotting the, we're looking at our tip data set again. Uh, I've got total bill versus tip. Um, so total bill is up top. We notice we get this again, this sort of long tail dish distribution. And then we get tip, um, something that's somewhat almost bimodal. Uh, one, one might say uh, it's uh, it's around these two, um, which would be kind of interesting if you if you plotted uh, the distribution of uh, tip divided by total bill. You would certainly see that there would be modes there because uh, people tend to tip around percentages. Um, okay, but you also see that there's a a relation between them, right? And this relation is generally captured up here. Uh, so, so this, uh, what, what did they call this? I think they called this the stat function. Okay. So, so this right here is the stat function. We'll calculate a function uh, of these two. In this case, it calculates the Pearson R. Uh, the Pearson R is just the normal correlation. Uh, when people are talking about correlation, they generally mean this Pearson R correlation, as well as the p-value, which is the significance of this correlation, uh, which is pretty low, which is really good. This, they are certainly correlated in some way. Okay. So this, this is the entire distribution. Um, there's a lot of things that we can do to this to sort of change it around a few weird, uh, parts. So, so let's sort of go through this entire thing and sort of show it to you. Okay. Uh, the first thing that we can do, um, is, uh, we, we can go ahead and we can add on, uh, a specific kind. So in this case, if we select kind equals regression, uh, so previously, we didn't have any regression, we didn't have any kind. So we select kind equals regression. It will go ahead and it will show us the line of best fit, just a normal linear regression between these two. Okay. So it will also show a confidence bound around this line. We'll talk a little bit more about that, uh, I guess, a little bit later when we're doing the actual regression uh, videos. Uh, it actually goes ahead and it plots on the KDE of these things as well, which is kind of interesting that specifying the kind equals regression would do that. but. There you go. I guess at this point it says like, I guess you're assuming that these are normally distributed, so we can go ahead and, and, and make this sort of assumption. Okay. We've got two more kinds. We've got the kind equals hex. Okay. So this is, this is kind of cool. You guys might have already intuited what this is doing. It's basically doing a hexagonal uh, heat map slash histogram. So the places that are very high density right here, um, where their, their sort of joint di uh, distribution is, is, is very high. You go ahead and you get very, very dark. And things with low density, you get very, very light. Um, again, we, we select the same uh, stance function. And of course, you expect we can also do KDE. So this, this will be extremely familiar to you guys. So notice here, again, we don't do a KDE. We just do a histogram. It's kind of goofy. Um, and then here, you do do a KDE. Because we, we said that uh, the type is KDE. So this is probably some sort of Gaussian here. It doesn't really look like it. but. We, we at least assume that these are, and this one looks pretty smooth. So we see this KDE again, this is a shaded version. So pretty cool. Uh, we can change the stat function that will appear. Uh, so in this case, we can take the Spearman R. So we can change the stat function that will appear. So yeah, in this case, um, this is a different type of correlation. In this correlation, what this means is that if it goes up, uh, if, uh, if variable A goes up and variable B goes up, then, then that will mean some sort of correlation, even if they go up in a non-linear uh, way. Whereas uh, the Pearson R correlation will actually show you uh, how linear is this relationship. So in this case, uh, Spearman R is six. They certainly do move up together uh, with a, a p-value that's incredibly small. Uh, again, it, it sort of plots the KDEs. So you can put whatever excuse me, you can put whatever stat function you want in there. Uh, I'll show you one more thing. 
You can make this a little bit nicer here by adding on plot joints and later on plot marginals. So I told you, uh, you've got a joint plot and marginal plots, okay? So when I make my first plot, I make a joint plot. Um, so of the total build and the tips, we, we sort of get the scatter plot as always. But if I go on and I put in plot joint, dot plot joint, so this will return an object which has a dot plot joint on it. If I go ahead and I use this, this plot joint, I can go ahead and I can add in different types of plots. So SNS dot KDE plot with six levels. Um, to, uh, excuse me, to, to the joint plot. And you can do this also to the marginal plots. Uh, so this is something that was, wasn't really explained too well here, uh, but you can do it for both. Um, so after this runs, you'll notice, here we go. I went ahead and I did a plot joint down here with the KDE, and I go ahead and I add in plot marginals of that rug plot, if you remember, uh, from one of our first videos, onto each of the marginals. So again, on the marginals, you're going to be adding uh, univariate plots, and on the uh, joints, you need to add bivariate plots, so, so two variables. So this is a wonderful way of visualizing two variables. I, I think this is probably the best way there is. If you're keenly interested in the relationship between two variables, let's say you've made a new factor, um, and you have your output variable, you want to see how they're related, this is a wonderful way to plot them. Um, you can't do a ton of transformations, and this is not really the best for linear space, but this also gives you this sort of uh, double marginal plot on top. Um, so this is, this is wonderful when you're dealing with bivariates. When you're dealing with multivariate, when you're dealing with lots and lots of variables and how they correlate uh, with each other, this is not the ideal plot. Um, okay, that was, that was a slew of stuff. I hope that was all friendly to you, um, and I hope this sort of gives you a sense of how to use it. Uh, okay, I'm excited to do the next one. Always a pleasure.